Well, hi everyone. Thanks for watching today. Uh, today I'm with Monty Ogilvy, professional boxer uh, and Celtic title challenger. Thanks for being with us today, Monty. Uh, coolest, name in, coolest name in boxing, by the way. I like Thank that. You. That's got to be uh, yeah. That's that's got to be one of the coolest names I've I've heard in in boxing. It's, it's a unique one. My dad um, my dad's called John and decided that uh, he wanted me to have an interesting name, so he called me Montgomery. Monty for short for Monty. Yeah, I like that. But you know, it makes you it makes you stand out in the ring, doesn't it? I mean, it's, it's a good name, it's a memorable name. Um, it's, um, sorry, sorry, I forgot. It's good no. for uh, walking music. <laughs> good for walking music. Always walk out. To, um, Tom Jones, you can leave your hat on. Like film like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it's a great song. That's a good. That's a good choice. You know, something a bit different. Um, I like that actually because you often hear people walk up to the same type of thing, you know. So it's it's nice when you know when like when I'm at fights and somebody walks up to something um, something a bit different. Yeah. So let's start at the beginning. I mean, you, you know, you and and boxing. Um, I mean, how did you first get into boxing? How did the journey begin for you in the sport? Um, I grew up in a wee town in the middle of nowhere called um, Clan. So it's right in the middle of nowhere, but. Um, quite a small high school, but um, really far back when I was in primary school, I really struggled with everything. Um, I really, really struggled. Um, I was just slow at school, slow at learning, and I wasn't very good physically. I couldn't play football. I was always putting goals playing football with my mates because I was useless. Um, and I think that kind of stuck with me. You know, I remember, sad as it sounds, but I remember, um, I remember my parents going to appearance evening for school and I was there and there was all the pictures on the wall everyone had done in art class but mine wasn't on the wall because it wasn't very good so <laughs> that kind of thing stuck to me and stuck with me and on and um, always liked always liked fighting I liked Bruce Lee I liked all the martial arts movies when I was a child but um went up to high school and I kind of you know that age 13 14 I got in a lot of trouble not a lot of trouble but I was fighting quite a lot, lot of, fighting a lot of the bigger boys and quite small um, and my mum had a friend whose son boxed, um, Mark, still know him very well, and uh, he took me along to the boxing club, and he stopped going, and I just kept going, and loved it right away. So. Okay, so that's how it started. And I know that, um, you know, your, your amateur career was obviously, you know, it was a bit sort of touch and go. I mean, um, could you sort of tell us a little bit more about your amateur career? Well, let's say I, I, I loved boxing right away, and I was only in the... I was only in the gym too, well, properly. I was in and out, like, in a gym, and then I, I probably started going to a boxing club. And I was only at the boxing club two months, and I got put forward for a bout. And I actually won my first bout as an amateur. I won it at a box to beat a boy 12 years ago. Um, David Johnson, his name was. Um, but then after that, I lost, I lost 10, 10 of my next uh, 12 bouts. lost 10 of my next 12. And um, and well, I kept training, and and you know I got a bit disheartened, and everything, everything that was going on, it was quite, it was quite hard, you know. Um, losing on in fights, but I loved it. I was so passionate about the sport. I stuck it out, and I kept training. And around that time, actually, I went off to university when I was nineteen, and I hadn't boxed for two years. But I was still training, but I hadn't boxed. And uh, I decided I'll have another crack at this, <laughs> and just for the fun of it, really. And uh, I wound up winning seven bouts in a row when I came back. And and then I lost one, then I won like, another three. And I wound up I wound up winning a title, um, just a district title. And then I won the university title. And then I boxed a couple of um, Scottish selects. So I boxed over in Cyprus and I boxed in England. And yeah, that was kind of what happened. It just it took off and it was like... Everything in my life, like even university, I struggled at school, and I struggled. Um, I struggled with sports. I struggled with everything, but I, I, like boxing taught me that if you persevere, like you get through things and you come through the other end of it. And that was what it was for me. So I left school with like pretty poor grades. I went to college for a couple of years, and then all of a sudden I realized if you I work hard, I'll get the good grades, and then I wound up going to uni. I just kind of stumbled into it all, and it was all just through just hard work, and that was what boxing taught me really. 
I like that. I like I like the perseverance. Um, it's, you know, that that's a strong sort of statement for you know for people watching this. I mean, you you mentioned that with the amateur career, you know, winning and losing and things like that. I mean, what what was the mental change that went through? I mean, you know, what I'm asking is sort of how did you turn it around from sort of struggling? Um, was it mainly the hard work, or was there more of like a mental sort of adaption? I think it was a mental thing, like. So I came out and I won my first fight and like it went from being, I was that wee guy in school that had no pressure on me because I wasn't very good at anything and then won my first fight and, and like a coach I had at the time like he put quite a lot of pressure on me and I like, I think I had the pressure he put on me was only amplified by myself and I was expecting myself to be doing better and then obviously I kept losing and it just, the pressure just piled up but then I went to university and like around that sort of time and just let's say I was training and persevering when I went to university I thought I just I don't have any pressure on me now because no one knows me and everything else and I was living in a different place and I wound up going to a different gym and uh, yeah it was it just it was a totally fresh start and just having that fresh start and that bit more maturity a bit more maturity in the sense that I, I looked at it from a more objective perspective uh, I, I don't think I'm be very clear, but when I had that break, it just gave me a different perspective on the sport, and I didn't have all that expectation on me. And then I started winning. And I'm like, well, they were kind of right. I'm not bad at this, but as a mindset thing, it's you know you can only I, I adopted the mindset at that point. Like you can only cover all the things you can cover. So you can't cover how good your opponent is, but you can cover how how fit you are, how hard you work. You can cover that you won't quit on yourself. No matter how bad it's going, you won't quit on yourself. So the, them kind of lessons carried me through. And actually, one of my first fights back after my time off as an amateur, I got put down in the first round with a body shot. And I got up and I actually wound up um, winning a split decision. So after going down in the first round, and that was a kind of a big thing for me because, you know, you're going down and, like, it's easy to just be defeated and just try and survive. But, I just got up and I was like, I fall back and it was good for me, you know, good. That's good. So, so you've learned a lot of lessons then, um, really, in, in your career so far. I mean, what, what I'm going to do, Monty, is I'm actually going to skip to something I was, I was going to ask you later and I'm going to, going to ask now because, you, you know, you sort of touched on some really good, really, really good stuff there. Like, if you had advice for somebody now sort of getting into boxing or they're just starting out, or, or maybe not just boxing, but maybe, you know, you know, a young lad who's getting into sort of anything, I mean, what would your advice to them be? Like, what would you tell them? Well, like to say, what I kind of learned as I got older was it's not so much thinking about the outcome of the fight or the performance. It's more concentrated on your performance. So I, I had a couple of fights that I lost. Um, and amateurs after I came back and I actually performed really well. Maybe I lost a split decision to a, a boxer lad that was in, he was just turned 18, I was 19, he was just turned 18 and he got to the final of the British Championships as an amateur and he only beat me by a couple of points and it was like, I performed well that fight. So yeah, so that was that was it. So it was a mindset. I like, um, I like where you're coming from with that, Monty, in all fairness. I think it, I, like I say, I think it'll sort of help people um, because you know when you're getting started into into something like that, you you know you do put you do put pressure on yourself, and and you you know saying that you almost have nothing to lose, you know type of thing, is um is is a good way to look at it. I mean, mo moving on like into now more into your professional career and everything like that. Obviously, you turned pro. So far, what would you say has been like the proudest moment um, of your career? Um, proudest moment of my career was uh, when I boxed. Um, Joe Ducker, Joe Ducker, um, mm. because I think, you know, when you turn pro, you box, you box some journeymen, you box some guys that, you know, maybe wouldn't have the amateur experience I had, wouldn't have had, you know, so it was like, that was my first real step up as a professional, and it wasn't like, obviously, he was the British challenge belt holder at the time, so, and um it was a really hard fight, and again, it was one of those instances he rocked me really bad in the second round of our fight, like really bad. And the video, my legs went, um, and he didn't jump on me. He should have, um, but I survived that fight, and I got through it, and I got a decision, and I won it quite clearly in the end. Um, I think I won it four rounds to two or something, or five one. Um, but yeah, that that like, getting through that hardship 
getting through that adversity is my proudest moment because again I could have folded there and I lost to him when it looked terrible you know and I was still quite I was only my seventh fight so but I got through it and I got a decision and it put me I was ranked at the time I was ranked 30th in Britain 31st and it put me up to like 16th so it was a good solid win and mm. yeah it set me up well down the line I hope mm. I think so I mean personally I've, I've seen Joe Ducker box and stuff like that and you know and he, he is a he is a heavy hitter and everything so you know getting through a fight like that it's, it's, it's a very good win it's you know something to be proud of 100% so I mean with this we, we you know you touched on the mental side of preparing for fights and I, I'm going to go I, you know, we've touched on that so I'm going to go back there I mean with this how do you mentally prepare now I mean do you feel say the same type of pressure you felt when you were an amateur or do you feel different about it now that you've sort of had some tougher fights you've gained confidence and everything I think this is going to sound really weird but obviously my last bout I boxed Nathaniel Collins for the Celtic title and it didn't go my way um, my preparation went very well but on the night you know I kind of I think I kind of defeated myself made it a little bit easier for him and I was really feeling the pressure at that point um, around the time I boxed Nathaniel, that's my partner. And it was like, I, I was so close to touching, like, I, when I turned pro, I only really turned pro. I turned pro because of a tragedy that happened at my amateur boxing club. We had pros, Mike Till used to share the same gym as me. Remember Mike Till passed away a few years? I remember. And he shared the same gym as me. And, um, and when he passed, I thought, yeah, I can't really justify doing this for free anymore. So, I'm going to go pro and have a go. And it was literally just, I'm going to have a go. I thought I'll have a few fights and see how it goes. Um, I never thought I'd get to 9-0 and and be fighting for, like, the equivalent of the English title. You know, if I'd won that, I'd have been I'd be top 10 in Britain. And I kind of got overwhelmed by the moment, I think. Um, and people, you know, it, it's, it's lovely that people believe in you. And But for me, I, I let it overwhelm me, and I really shouldn't because I felt like, Everyone was putting a lot of pressure. Like everyone, everyone believed I was going to do it, and I knew how good Nathaniel is. I know how good Nathaniel is. Um, so I kind of, I kind of got to me about at the time. But prior to that fight, I was, I was doing, I done good with my, my kind of, my head. That's always kind of held me back at times. I think in my life, and there's times it hasn't. Um, but I, I used to, uh, for every other fight before that fight, I never really concentrated on the outcome of the fight. I just concentrated on doing my work, doing my job, doing my running doing my training, doing my, I, I like to meditate, I do a lot of meditation, try and keep myself calm, I do stuff like that, so as long as I cover those three bases, I do my training, I keep my mind right, and I don't quit on myself, and that's all I promise myself for a fight, but that fight with Nathaniel Collins was the first fight in a long time that I was more worried about the outcome than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand, I do understand. It's, uh, it's interesting to get an insight into that um, mindset, I mean, you know, personally, funny, I mean, even though we're interviewed, I relate on a lot of levels. But, um, you know, it is good that you've learned. And I think that's that self sort of mastery is something that we all live and learn. And the other thing I'd say is I still think, obviously, you know, there's still titles ahead for you. I mean, I would say so. Um, obviously, it's, it's up to you at the end of the day. But, you know, keep training and you'll get there. And that does lead me to basically the next question. The next thing I want to ask you is... What are your ambitions now? I mean, what you know, where do you want to go um, in the next few years with your career? I'll take it. I, like my mind says, I'm taking it one fight at a time. But I don't feel I give a good account of myself that night. Um, I've never, with the exception of one exception, I've been down twice with body shots in the amateurs many years ago, and I got put. Um, I got put down with a body shot in that fight, and it was like a long time since this happened, but. Um, my my aspiration is actually I'm going to drop down to super bantam weight. I think I'm pretty big at featherweight, but I think I can make super bantam weight quite comfortably with good disciplined approach. Mm. Um, and I'd like to think I'll pick up a title of that weight division, but at that division, there's less people, and I believe I can maybe you know get a shot at a major down the line. I believe I'm good enough, um, but everyone has a uh, sometimes just don't turn up on the night. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of just one fight at a time. But I, I, I'll, before I retire, I'd like to pick up a title. Mm. So that's that's the aim. Yeah, I see. But the thing is, Monty, I mean, um, 
I like some of what you said, you know, about the Celtic title fight. And I, and I know it didn't go your way and things. But do you feel that you, you took some positives away from it in terms of experience and thing, you know, things like that? Yeah, I mean, I took, I did take a lot away from it. Um, I took a lot, you know, right, again, this is a bit off topic, but financially that fight helped me a lot, which was a big help at the time. Um, but also, like, I think I proved a lot of people, maybe I didn't prove a lot of people wrong, but I proved how tough I was. I went down three times in that fight. Boxing News reported it was five, but it was three. <laughs> um, I went down three times in that fight, and every, every time I went down, I got up. And body shots were sickening, cracked my ribs. I was hurt, but I got up and I kept fighting. And they stopped me on my feet. And I actually thought I was coming into the fight at the time. I was, you know, and when they stopped it, but fair play to Nathaniel, he done his job. But like, I think I proved, like, I proved I'm a warrior, you know? And that was always kind of the thing, like, don't quit on yourself. I would have, like, he couldn't have put me, he couldn't have, he couldn't have kept me good that night. No way, you know? And I gave it my all, and I'm not trying to be ashamed of. And, like you say, I learned a lot. I learned a lot, a lot actually, that fight, um, including the preparation. Like, I won't say too much about it, but I had, I believe, with that fight, I, I had to make some hard decisions after that. Um, Randall Monroe, I was training with him at the time when I was doing a bit with Joe and that, and he gave me some advice, and it wasn't necessarily easy to follow, but I had to do it, you know. Mm. So it answered a lot, a lot of questions for you in in a lot of ways then, and. Like I say, I mean, honestly, it's still something to be proud of. I mean, that's, you know, that's still a higher level than a lot of people, you know, ever get to. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, getting there and even in 10 fights is, is fairly good. And it's still, there's still a lot more sort of on, on the horizon, I think. So, so that's, that's good with that. And I mean, that does lead into um, something I've been thinking about, as, as you've been saying. You obviously have a strong motivation, you know, in, in your boxing. You obviously have a strong, I mean, I can see that just talking to you now. What is for you, like the why, I mean, of, you know, of fighting, of, of boxing, I mean, you touched on it with, you know, proving people wrong and different, different things, but I mean, what, what, you know, at the heart of it, for you, what is the, the why that gets you out of bed in the morning to run and, you know, do everything, everything that you do? I, you know what, I, I do ask myself sometimes, is it worth, is it worth doing this? And, you know what, what, what the big thing for me is, right, and again, I won't say any names or anything, but, I know a lot of people in my life, people I know, older people, younger people who, are, who say, oh, I could have done this or I could have done that. Whereas I'd rather, I, someone once told me, one of the best bits of advice I ever got was, I'd rather regret the things I did do than the things I didn't. So say I don't get any further in my boxing career and I lose my next five fights or something, I've still gave it a go and I've still given them all. And I, I can't sit in a pub 10 years from now and say I could have been a contender because I, tr- I tried. You know, I'd rather regret the things I did than the things I didn't. It's important to me that um, like, I love boxing. I love everything it, everything it is. Like, like, I remember, like, when I started reading the magazines and reading about um, a strange one, despite him being a bit of an idiot, uh, one of my favorite boxers is Brian Hopkins because of his discipline. His discipline, he lost his first fight. He lost his first world title fight. He drew his second. He just persevered until he got it, you know, and... Um, that kind of resonates with me, but back to what I was saying is like reading about boxing, like it's just like how they're gladiators and, and everything else. Um, and I just, I feel for me, it's a big honor to be like, even doing an interview with yourself, like I feel like, I feel a huge honor that people <laughs> want to, people are interested in, in what I've got to say and interested in my career and you know people buy like loads of people buy tickets come and watch your fight it's an insane sense of flattery and I think I worked to myself but also a lot of people to, to put my all into it and, and that's it I guess I went a bit long-winded a bit off topic but that's generally how I feel about it I think like, mm, I like it though I mean I like I like the passion um and something like that and again you know something like that is is you know fantastic advice for people you know, coming into the sport, maybe, you know, you know, anyone watching this who's maybe had, you know, like a tough fight or a tough loss or something, or even something, you know, not, not boxing related, you know, but like somebody who's just going through a tough sort of time in, in life, you, you know, with an attitude like that, it's, it, it's good. It's very, it's very, very positive and it'll, you know, it'll sort of take you a long way, I think. The one thing I would like to go back to, I mean, is, is obviously, it's a, it's a bit of a funny one, but I can sort of see, you know, as you're talking, Obviously, your upbringing has affected 
your career. Um, and it sounds to me like, you know, aspects of growing up have given you the, the positive motivation to, to succeed. But I mean, from your point of view, how do you see, you know, how your upbringing has sort of affected um, your career? If that like, makes sense. Like, I think I had a very, I had a very good upbringing in the sense that like my mum, my mum done everything for me. She was the best, best mother I could have asked for was uh, ever. Like that even includes like taking me to the gym when I started boxing. You know, she always took me to the gym and always went out of her way to give up her evenings, take me to the gym, and that was amazing. But like I always remember like being undersized as a child and and like I was pretty premature and stuff. And I don't know if that impacts anything, but like I, said, I really struggled with everything, and it wasn't necessarily I was living in a rough neighborhood or or anything like you hear on the TV, but for me, it was, for me, I really, I felt, I used to beat myself a lot about not being good enough and, and everything else that comes with struggling at a young age, you know, um, and like, you know, and for me, it was the things I persevered with that allowed me to be successful at things. Um, I think I might have been a bit off topic there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think just, I think your experiences shape you as a person um, on the whole. And I'm very grateful for the hardships I encountered as a young person because it's allowed me to fortify myself as I've got older. And the sense that I really don't quit with anything. Like I failed my driving test like five times <laughs> and I, I never drive everywhere. You know, and I just, I just, it's, I think struggling with things like when I was young, like even just silly things like that, it took me ages to learn to ride a bike, it took me ages to learn to tie my shoelaces and them little insignificant experiences for most people have allowed me to persevere through things that maybe other people wouldn't persevere through or maybe they would, but you know, that's, that's how I see it is. That's, if I could, if I could sum up one of my strengths in life, it's just stubbornness, just pure stubbornness. Just keeping at it. Wow. Okay. And the only other thing really that I'd, I'd ask, because what it is, is, you know, I had some things in mind to talk about, to be honest. And, and what we've done, which is, which is a good thing, is we've covered several of them at a time, do you know what I mean? Which, which I like. Um, but the one thing I was going to ask is, is to you. So that, that's basically the meaning of, of success to you then. Because one of the questions I had is, um, you know, what is success to you? Um, if you if you had to say, I mean, is it, is it fame? Is it money? Or is it or is it just showing that you that you can do I this? Think, I think it's just proven to myself. I guess like I, I don't really like like no one criticizes you worse than yourself, you know. And if I can, you know, I just I like I don't really know what I'm trying to say, but I guess if something comes easy, it's probably not worth doing, and nothing's. Nothing I've ever been proud of came easy. So, like, I think I just, I, I don't know. I don't really know how to answer that question. It's a strange one, but I think the most important thing to me is just, you know, self, self, self fulfillment. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Well, you know, Monty. I mean, we you know we we've we've covered like some really good um, some really good stuff there. We you know we've covered quite a bit. I mean, I'm I'm very happy with that. To be honest, I mean, is is there anything, you know, that you'd like to say, like to anyone watching this at all, anything specific, or, or are you sort of all all good? I'm all good. I'd like to give a. I was on the phone to my mum today, and obviously that post I put up today, my mum. So I'd just like to say if you could let me have a shout out to mum, tell her, you know, I've not seen her obviously for a long time with this COVID nineteen thing. So it's seven eight weeks I've not been able to see mum. I've not seen my dad, and um, so I'd just like to say. Hello to them. I hope they're, hope they're well. Even though I spoke to them earlier. That's good. I, like I've done, I've done quite a few interviews, and I think this is the first one I've not really made a mess of, <laughs> in a sense. Um. So yeah, no, I enjoy, I enjoy doing them. It's a bit nerve wracking at times, but I enjoy. I like. I was thinking if if you do one person can take some positive from what I've got to say, it's worthwhile saying, you know. But, you know, I like to think I've done all right. Like sometimes I have to pinch myself because. I used to, when I lost those fights, I used to dream about being a pro boxer and I used to dream about, you know, all this and all that. I could never imagine it. I was getting beat all the time and 
and to be where I am, that's what I'm saying. It's like an insane sense of flattery that guys like yourself want to interview me. And it's something I just have to pinch myself because I can't believe, like, even though it's been hard at times, I'm still living my dream, really. Um, so, like, saying every every fight's a gift, you know, <laughs> I guess. Well, on that note, Monty, I mean, that's, you know, that's fantastic. Um, I, I appreciate you taking the time to, um, you know, do this interview today with us. Um, I do appreciate that a lot. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm sure it'll help people who, who are listening. I mean, you know, we're all going through tough times at the moment in different ways and, and everything. Uh, and you've put some, you know, some really good stuff across there. So, so thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate that. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Pleasure's on me.